You've probably wondered what's the best move for your investment portfolio with the election coming up. Today, we're talking through the three biggest questions we get around elections and investing. Stick around. So when we started 2020, who would have thought the election would not be the topic of conversation? But that what is what we're talking about today. And we're going to talk through the three questions that we get most about the election. And we're going to start with the first one here. It's why should I stay invested in such an unprecedented political environment? That's a great question. There's so much uncertainty, so much concern, so much emotions within a presidential election. But, you know, the facts are pretty straightforward that the average stock market return in election year is 11 percent, which is actually above the historical average. And the reality is 19 of the last 23 years when there's been an election, the stock market has been up. So actually, it's been in your favor to be invested in a election year versus not. And in those years, the four years that it wasn't, there were huge events that happened outside of just the presidential election that influenced there. So then, of course, the next question is related to the party. Which party is best for your investment picture and the stock market and the economy? Yeah. And there, once again, there has been no material difference between Republicans or Democrats, either as in the, in the White House or also in the Senate, in the Congress. So there has really been no kind of preferred party on either side. Uh, so it's one of those things where I would not make investment decisions based upon who you think will or will not be uh, in office or you controlling the Senate or the House. And we got a great chart to address that question that shows the growth over time, be it Democrat or Republican in office. So the third question that we get is in light of those first two questions, people are always very worried about what they should do now with their investment picture. Yeah, everyone always wants to act, right? You have to do something. It's, it's really difficult as human beings to sit back and not do anything. But, you know, I, I always, there's three kind of th very, th three action takeaways I'll take out of this and what you should do now. One is beware of market timing. And we've talked about this in the past, but the risk is if you make a poor decision, what's your plan B? What will happen if you're, you're wrong? Uh, the second thing is, you know, stick really to your financial and investment plan. I know that's kind of boring to say, but, you know, people that I found over the long term, people that stick to the plan and, and focus on what they can control do much, much better over the long term than trying to, to time when to jump in and when to jump out of the market. And that really leads into the third thing, which I kind of uh, you know, talked about briefly there was really focusing on what you can control um, and, and really what you enjoy your life and focus on your, your saving, your spending, taxes, estate, your healthcare, and then, you know, enjoy time with your friends and family, given it's an, been such a challenging year in 2020. Um, so that's what I would do now. It's really market time, avoid market timing, stick to the plan and focus on what you can control. And I'll close with this quote I love from Benjamin Graham. In the short run, the market's a voting machine, but in the long run, it's a weighing machine. So those long run decisions matter a lot more in what you end up with. So if you like this video, you can uh, check out many of the other videos we have here on our YouTube channel. You can check out our podcast as well. We have 120 episodes there where we've talked in more depth about these topics. And if you don't want to miss the next episode, you can subscribe and check us out. We, we uh, release these episodes every other Monday. Thanks for joining us.